Alrighty, hello and welcome to my Voltorb flip guide slash tutorial. I've been playing a lot of it on my uh, Uranium playthrough and there weren't too many resources online, um, at least on how to play and some of the um, methods on getting the, the most out of it. Now, if you're not familiar with Voltorb flip, it's basically this mini game that was introduced in Heart Gold and Soul Silver to replace the slot mechanic, uh, the slot machine mechanic, in that they figured it was too gambly close to gambling and they wanted to have more of a game of skill now this game is a bit of a cross between sudoku and minesweeper that's what i've sort of uh, become accustomed to referring this to as and what it is is there's these grid of 25 spaces and underneath each of these spaces is either a token with a one a two or a three or a bomb the bomb would be equivalent to a uh, a mine in Minesweeper. And so the goal is to get all of the non ones and so get all the twos and threes that you can find that are on this board, find them without revealing a bomb. If you hit a bomb, you lose and go back to whatever level you started with or however many uh, revealed tokens you have. That's a little confusing. But anyway, the most prevailing way to do this is called the dead space method. Um, Basically, because you, there's no point in uncovering a 1, it doesn't advance you further and it just increases your risk. What you can do is avoid tiles that are just 1s. And the way you can do this is by logically eliminating things um, from play. So, the, the numbers here, as you can see, 3 tells you that there's 3 points in this row right here. And two means that there's two Voltarbs. So there's two bombs in one of this. So that's a two in five chance of getting one. And there's only threes here. There's only three other spaces. So one, two, there's two bombs and three spaces with ones. That means that none of these tiles are ones that I want to uncover because ones don't help me and bombs certainly don't help me. So that eliminates five right there. Now what you can do is there are several combinations of numbers that or basically instantly tell you these rows you don't need to care about. It's when they add up to five. See, three and two add up to five, which means that each one of these has a value of one and one Voltarb. Uh, another one, very obviously, right here with four and one. Um, that is another one of those cases where four of these are going to be one, 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 one Voltorb. We don't know that that's the Voltorb, but just we can count and use logic to proceed from there. And as you can see, another one right here. I am playing in Pokemon Uranium because that's what I'm playing with, but these principles still apply to Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Now, after you've filled out those, you also notice that there are these rows that have zero Voltorbs. These are basically free rows because you know there's no, there's no mines here. So we can clear these without having to worry. And as we can see, that one's going to be a 1, which we already knew, but we also know that it's a safe one because that has a 0. And then up here, we've got another safe row. So let's see what we've got. So now, we can go and uncover these. I usually, once I know that they're either they're dead spaces, I generally tend to not um, uncover them. I just leave them with the Voltor because it's meaningless. But this just uh, shows you what's going on. So now... We've gotten to the point where we've gotten all of our free tiles, but we still have six of these tiles left. And this is where the game actually comes down to chance again. They did their best, well not that they couldn't have done better, but they made this game so it's more skill based than slot machine, but it still basically comes down to odds. Um, right now, we don't know which one of these is going to be bombs, and so the best way to do this is to sort of search for high number values because we know that there's going to be a couple of um, non ones in this one and there's only one bomb in here so the odds of it being in one of these two spaces plus this one having a one bomb right here so you want to sort of search for high number values and low voltarb values because that in general will lead you to safer spots you can never be a hundred percent sure and a lot of the time in this game it sometimes comes down to just plain 50 50 shots here so now we've got to this interesting spot where we know that this column has to add up to um, seven. And we've got a one visible, a one visible, and a two. That adds up to four. So we know in these two tiles, there's going to be a three. And we know in here that this is either a one or a Voltorb, so it can't possibly be that one right there. 
so we know that that one is going to be a 3. That's the exactly the kind of logic that helps us get farther in this game, but eventually it comes down to just plain odds. Farther into the game, like past level 4 or level 5, it starts becoming just clearing what you can and guessing based on those higher probabilities of uh, chances. So another situation we've got here is we've got a visible 1 and a visible 3. We know that two spots of these three are going to be Voltorb, so one, two. This is a questionable spot, but because we know that we already have four points visible, this one right here has to be either a one or Voltorb, so it becomes a dead spot. And it's really just about that. Um, there are certain combinations. There's another one right here that's really common. If you get a three when there's a one and a six, basically tells you that row is cleared because we got four visible points, one, Four. One of these is going to be a Voltorb, but then we know that this is going to like one of these is going to be a Voltorb, but the other one's going to be a one or higher, but then it has to be at a six. So one Voltorb as a bomb, one, two, going to be six. So that means this tile is free. And then now, because we know that this one has to have a five, and also this row has two bombs in it. Um, just the way that the logic works out here, that we know that this one needs to be a 2 in order to qualify this to be 2, because 1, 2, 1, 1 point visible. One of these three is going to be a 1, because there's only two Voltorbs, so it has to be a 2 in order to qualify this, and it also matches with this row. So we know that that's a 2. So that's sort of the general process of clearing these levels using the dead space method. and. This is really helpful for clearing out and not wasting your time with junk levels because what you can do here is we've got another one of those adding up to five so we can just clear out this row. We know we don't care about this row whatsoever. Now we can do this to the edge here. And I know in Heart Gold, Soul Silver, you get more options and I wish they had implemented it in Uranium, but that's, that's another story. Um, again, we get another free row. So we got a one, a one, we know this is going to be a 1, but let's uncover it anyway. A 2, and it's going to be a 3. So, again, we've got these this free row right here because we have three visible points. There's only one Voltorb right here, so one of these three or four spots is going to be a mine. The rest are going to be 1s, and that qualifies this as dead space. So it's all about that process of elimination. But in the end, you can't perfectly know exactly what's going to be there. It's not like an actual... Um, Sudoku game, I know I say it weird, um, because in Sudoku you can guarantee know for sure what's going to be there, but in this there's still an element of chance, otherwise it would just be a coin machine, you couldn't, um, you'd just be giving away coins right there. So here, I chose to go here because this is a value of 6 and a value of 6 with only one bomb right here. I wouldn't want to go say here because that has a 3 chance of uh, one of these going to be a bomb. So that's not very safe, so I decided to go with the 6 and 1, and it paid off, because um, you never quite know what's going to be a safe one. Again, we're at this spot where we've got one bomb and three empty spaces, one point visible, so we know, clear spot, and exactly the same up through here. One, two, three. So, now we're at the spot where we have four tiles left. I would personally go for this 5 and 1 tile, because we've got, again, we're trying to avoid this guy right here, still could be a bomb at this point but we were lucky and it wasn't so now we have two points visible one is a bomb three empty spaces more dead space now with this row we know one spot one voltor potentially and then two actively empty things so we know bam that one is a dead space and we don't have to care about it anymore which leaves us with just one spot which will actually fulfill our spots we've got one bomb on this row, leaving three empty spots, but we have to get up to five points, so it has to be a three, um, or a two. This one is three bombs and only has two other empty spots, so it also has to be a two. So it works out perfectly. Now, this method is pretty great for finding these lower levels where you gotta get a lot of that free information, but as you get higher up in the game, you'll realize that there's a lot, like in this one, the only free information that we get is this row right here. As the game gets harder, you have to sort of make more guesses and act less off of logic and knowing the answer and then move on to just sort of guesses. At this point, this is probably the one of the, the better shots right here because six and one, you want to go for high value 
um, targets because um, the higher the number, the greater the chance that there's going to be a tile that we want. Because we only want those twos or, or threes. Um, the way the game mechanic works in failure is that however many of these of twos and threes, if you get to the same number of um, as your level, so if we have uncovered three of them and we fail, we get to stay at level three. If we only uncover two of them, it will knock us back down to level two. Hopefully that makes some sense. Um, I'm going to move on to another resource that I found while researching and playing to show you just sort of how much chance has it involvement in this. And it's a really great tool and a great way to illustrate how this is still technically gambling, even though it's less so much um, as much gambling as slot machines. But it's still a game of chance, but it's still also a game of skill. Okay, so this is a really cool website called VoltorbFlip.com, and what it is, it's basically a calculator to calculate the best probability of what move you should take next. And it also has this great little um, tool that shows you how this game is based off of chance. Um, it calculates the lowest probability that there will be a bomb icon, and uh, what this does is let you make really good educated guesses the best mathematic guesses that you can and what you do is you just solve it and then you go back onto here and you input that and you tell it that's what that is so this one there's a 10 percent chance that there's going to be a bomb here so that we don't get any free information no no zeros so it doesn't automatically get this it doesn't quite do the same dead space method because it still calculates in that this is a really low chance right here because it's a four and a one and a five and a one um, so it still takes the, the chance on those because probability wise they are very low because there's there's a very strong chance that it won't be so we'll go over right here press a one again we still not getting very good information now this one now it's up to 11 percent chance that it's it's gonna be a bomb they've taken that chance again so it's a one now it's up to a 12 percent chance we know it's a one from our previous experimentation up here we know it's a three from our previous now we're down to a 9% chance, so that's increased. We're still tr trying to ride these 4 ones and 6 ones because it's, it's very low chance and probability here, but it's just giving the information. Now here, as you can see, 24% chance this is going to be a bomb. This is where the odds get heavily weighted in one way or another. Um, I don't know why it's flipping this one. Man, our odds must be terrible if we're going for that. Um, but this game really comes down to odds and probabilities. I can't tell you how many games I've had where it's come down to a 50-50 shot. Where, okay, this is either one answer, like it's been two, like a set of squares like this. Where it's like, okay, that's a three, or that's a three, and that's a bomb, and that's a bomb. Or that's a three, and that's a three, and that's a bomb, and that's a bomb. That's happened to me a ton. And those 50-50 shots, you just sort of got to take them and hope you're on the right side of them. Um, but this is a great little tool to make sure you're, you're doing what's mathematically best. See, this is this is only a level two or a level three board, and it's a pretty difficult one in terms of not giving us a lot of information. Now we know that this one is a safe tile. That's what's really cool about this calculator, is it, because it has all of this information. It's not necessarily displaying it. It's telling us that's just a completely safe tile. We know that this is going to be a safe tile, and it's a board clear. So this is just a really great uh, resource to, if you're really not that difficult of doing the dead space or you can't be asked to do any do any of it yourself and do the mental math and the sort of um, puzzle solving that this requires, this lets you get some coins fairly easily. It's not perfect because um, these games are still based off of chance. And you saw even throughout that, this was a level three board and we went up to 24% chance on some of those. So that was a one in four that we were gonna lose. Um, just for illustrative purposes, let's let's do this one and let's do a second one using this tool. So what you do is you just reset and you fill in uh, what these are, and I'll be right back when I do that. All right, so I've inputted all of the different things, and so let's see what chance this is. And all of it already, we know a lot of information based off just the statistics. We know that these are bombs and these are free. Like it does all of the math perfectly, so you don't have to do and search for cards. I still really enjoy doing that. Uh, the, the method of uh, dead space and actually clearing it personally because it's it's fun it's it's enjoyable and it's a nice little puzzle and man look at all that information we got just from the uncovering that too so let's uncover the right one that's a three and that's going 
to be a three, two. Congratulations. So now all you gotta do is figure out, it calculated where all of the empty spaces are. And bam, that easy. Like I said, I still enjoy doing this personally using the, the, the dead space method. It, it's a really fun puzzle. I always enjoy doing Sudoku's and, and puzzles and things like that. But you get sometimes you get boards like this where there's no information. You just gotta guess. And ultimately, like that one, I got it. And that creates a dead space there because the six and the one and the, the spaces line up like that. But it's not always that lucky. And as you get higher on in the levels, it gets harder and harder to sort of figure that stuff out. Um, and ultimately, you do take a very similar path to, let's see, 201. Oh, man. This is a killer board right here. Sometimes it does take a little bit of trial and error to get to where you want to. But in the end... Stuff like that happens. It's a game of chance in the end, and it's still an enjoyable little puzzle, and you're gonna get messed up. That's the, that's the key. You're not gonna be able to do this perfectly, no matter what method or tools you use. Um, you have boards like this where you get tons of information. I've had boards that have just been absolutely awful and give you nothing, but I've also had boards that gave everything away. Here's another um, of those cases where uh, the total adds up to five. This is a zero. Um, and we know that all of these are ones like that, so we know it's a dead space. So the, the numbers that are dead spaces are zeros and fives, fives and zeros, ones and fours, fours and ones, and twos and threes and threes and twos. Those are the ones that are instantly giveaway things. Um, the, re the best one out of those lots are the zero fives. Those ones, mm. When you get those, you basically know where a set of bombs are in all of the rows, and it really makes it easy for calculating. Because if this was a, a 0 and 5, you'd know that the bomb that's 1 right here is here. You'd know exactly without having to look. And you can clear all of these as if it was a 0, um, zero bomb area. And so those ones are really nice. The 5s and 0s, not so much, because it doesn't give you as much useful information. But those are just some of the dead spaces that you can find and hopefully this video is helpful um i encourage you to try it yourself and have some fun with the puzzles but if it gets too difficult just use the voltorb flip calculator and if you just need money or the coins to get some rewards in heart gold and soul silver or uranium it's a fun little mini game but i can understand it being frustrating because in the end it's all about odds and chance so <laughs> buyer be warned but anyway Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.